I've been doing this with my hair sticking up all the way through. So, um, ignore this, listen to this. <laughs> What is up everyone? Fish shop Matt here. It's really cold. I'm here at, I don't know what time, so I've just opened up the shop, lit it all up, clean, well no, I haven't cleaned everything. That's, that's, we'll do that later. But I've made sure everyone's okay, and I'm here, and it's early. What was I gonna do? Ah, algae eaters. I get lots of messages about which algae eaters should I choose, what ones. So in this video, I'm gonna do like, I don't know, five, six, seven of my favorites. The main ones that we sell on a regular basis for algae eating. Here we go, let's do it. Pow. Oh, it was getting too hot in that. Do I look messy? Yeah, perfect. That's my style, messy. Right, so before buying loads of algae eaters for your aquarium, you need to make sure that you have got things under control essentially. Algae can come from many different areas. So lighting, uh, poor filtration, poor maintenance, overfeeding, too much light, um, the list goes on. So you need to make sure that rather than just buying something to sort of cover up the problem, you need to make sure that you're on top of the problem first because you might not need an algae eater at all. And if you don't need an algae eater, well, winner, it gives you more space for sort of swimmy fish that you would prefer. But yeah, make sure you cover all those bases first. Just make sure you've had your water tested or you've tested your water at home. Make sure your lighting's not too bright um, and research the type of algae that you've got and see actually, is it an algae? Is it a cyanobacteria? Is it all these different things? So yeah, just do a bit of research, which I'll do more videos on in the future, but it's gonna take me a bit of time because it's quite an in-depth subject. But yeah, like I say, before going and throwing something in to try and fix the problem, make sure you've looked at what the problem is first. Now, onto the fish. So you've got to the point where you've sorted out the issue with regards to, I don't know, your lights are on 24 seven, who knows? But you've sorted that out, so now you're looking at some fish that are gonna help you and help you fix that, essentially. Now, in no particular order, but this is probably one of the most popular ones in the shop, is the bristlenose catfish. These little guys are great algae eaters. Obviously, they're gonna get to 15 centimeters, so they're gonna get chunky but they are great for controlling algae on flat surfaces. So, you know, your rocks, your bogwood, um, some plants with bigger leaves, but they might eat them if they get hungry. So you need to make sure you're feeding them as well, some algae wafers once in a while. Um, but yeah, they're gonna control all of your algae on flat surfaces. Now they come in a range of different colors. So you do get um, your standard sort of browns, you do get then your super reds, you get albinos, you get blue-eyed golden, you get starlight you get yeah loads of different colors and a few different species within that as well nothing's really too difficult on the different species and different color morphs they're all fairly similar for their care just need to make sure they've got some areas that they can call their own they can be a bit territorial when older not massively so it's nothing much to worry about but by a few juveniles you probably will end up with a pair that are gonna want to give you know a cave or somewhere and call their own for a couple of weeks not going much into it, but you know, male and female will slept somewhere. Male will then look after the eggs once they've been laid, but that's for another video. Um, what else was I gonna say? I think that was it actually. I think that was it. Oh, males and females, did I say? Males and females. Males get the bristle nose, so the males look beardy. Um, females should be absolutely plain, maybe just with a few bit of stubble <laughs> on the females. Not going into that. Um, I'm gonna leave that there actually, that'll do. Just as a quick note actually, before I go, of the bristlenoses. They do get big, 15 centimeters is a chunky fish, so you don't want to be getting them if you've got a little tiny nano tank. Yes, I suppose you could get two or three small ones, let them grow up, but just make sure that you've got somewhere to move them onto because if there's a lot of algae in your tank, they're gonna grow quite quickly. So next up, again, probably in popularity, but it's a close, it's a close second with another one. Um, Otto Sinclus, or the dwarf sucker mouth catfish. These little guys are essentially a miniature version of a bristle nose that likes to shoal. So really you want to be keeping these guys in groups because you'll just find, I find they're a bit more active. They're a bit more outgoing. They'll, yeah, they just feel more confident in themselves. You put one or two in, sometimes they can hide around the back and not come out. But you know, that can be down to tank mates as well if you're keeping them with big tank mates. But yeah, keep them in a group. They'll generally feel a little bit more secure. 
Now getting to only around sort of four or five centimeters, they can be kept in smaller aquaria. Again, the grouping thing's an issue, but you can keep them in smaller aquariums because they are staying quite small. They're very similar in the bristle nose, or very similar in the bristle nose, very similar to the bristle nose, where you've got them, they'll be eating any algae on flat surfaces, rocks, bogwood, plants, on your glass. The good thing with Ottos is their mouths are considerably smaller. So when you think of a bristle nose with a mouth this size and an Otto this size, the Otto is going to be able to get into a lot more crevices and cracks and actually get algae out of, well, more locations in theory. So yeah, with Ottos, it's fairly easy. Keep them in a group. I would suggest, as with any fish on this list, actually, before I go on, as with any fish on this list, they do deserve their own food every now and again. It's great that they're going to clean the aquarium, but you want to make sure they're happy and surviving and thriving as well. So I would always say with any of these fish on this list, probably some algae wafers, maybe some catfish pellets, maybe some shrimp pellets, but definitely algae wafers going in there probably once a week just to make sure they've got something that they can eat. So on to number three. I don't remember what number three is. Ah, I do. Number three, Amano shrimps. Now, again, these probably fight for second place with the Otto Sinkless. They are super, super popular. Not sure which one I prefer, to be honest. They both have their goons, but let's talk about Amano. So again, with a max size of around five centimeters, Amanos aren't gonna put a massive amount of bioload into your aquarium. Some people say that they put nothing in there. Obviously, they're gonna put something in there, but yeah, you don't really have to count them into the number of fish that you are keeping. With Amano shrimps, very much like Otto Sinkless, they like their own kind, they like to have company. So I'd always suggest getting a little group in there, um, you know, three, four or more, just so they've got, well, company. They'll be more active, they'll be happier, and they'll be a bit more outgoing as well. So in theory, you're gonna clean more algae for you. The great thing with the Mano shrimps is that they've got um, like, well, hands, claws, pincers, whatever you wanna call them. So they're gonna reach into a lot more areas and a lot more sort of hard to reach areas that the uh, fish aren't going to. You know, I suppose, imagine eating lasagna with just your mouth or imagine having your hands. It's gonna be much easier with your hands, just not smashing your face into the lasagna. So they are gonna be easier to get into all the nooks and crannies and the bits of bogwood and the little areas that food might fall in. Amano shrimp are gonna be, yeah, good at that. So. Most people do a mix. They'll do a few Amanos, a few Ottos, or a few Amanos and a few bristle noses, And that gives you a good base layer of cleanup crew for your aquarium. So yeah, Amano shrimps, great little cleanup crew. You know, they're probably one of my favorites just because of how interesting and characterful they are. You can go check out my video. I've done a whole fish files or shrimp files on Amano shrimp that I'll put in the comments. Um, or no, the, the, the bit that I write on underneath the video, I'll put it in there. Fourth up, I think on my list of no particular order on algae eaters. Nerite snails or zebra snails or whatever you want to call them. But nerite snails are a wide group of snails. I nearly said fish. They're a wide group of snails with quite a few different color forms, quite a few different um, shapes, I suppose. They're all mostly rounded, but some of them have spikes, some of them have stripes, but they are a really, really good algae eater for the aquarium. Again, they're gonna be cleaning off the algae on your rocks um, and on your glass and things like that. And they're normally quite good at grazing those tough green spots sort of off of the glass. Because they've got those little teeth, they are quite good at getting some of the more stubborn algae out of your aquarium. The other little bonus with nerites is that they generally can't breed in fresh water. They will lay eggs and you get these funny little like white dots around the aquarium on your hardscape, sometimes on the glass. But they seem, to, for me, they always seem to like bogwood. They always lay their eggs on the bogwood but these eggs will generally only hatch in brackish or salt water. So yeah, you've got no worries about them sort of overpopulating your aquarium. There are snails that I've left off of this list for that sheer reason. They're a great thing, but if you've got too much food going in there or yeah, you've got a problem or more algae than they can cope with, you will get them breeding just silly and you'll end up with a sea of snails. But yeah, that's the one good thing. These snail eggs are a bit annoying because they are white and they're really solid quite hard to scrape off sometimes. But yeah, that's the only problem that you have with them really. They don't breed, but they do lay eggs. Now I'm not too sure how many I've gone through already, probably five or six, I'm not sure. Now this one's a little bit of a specialist feeder. Um, can get a bit bigger, well I say bigger, 15 centimeters like the bristle nose, but this is the Siamese flying fox. 
Now, the Flying Fox doesn't generally do a lot of sort of standard algae, like your bristle nose and Otto Sinkless will, but they do hair algae really, really well. Now, as I say, juveniles, four, five, six centimeters, are brilliant at controlling hair algae. As this fish gets older and gets up to its fully grown size of 15 centimeters, they can get a bit lazy. It's not necessarily lazy, actually. They just can then challenge the other fish for food. So if you're keeping them in with, I don't know, a shoal of tetras or a shoal of little barbs or something like that, a 15 centimeter Siamese flying fox that can muscle its way into the food, kick everyone out the way and eat the food is gonna do that rather than eating algae. So the last two things on Siamese flying foxes is one, get the right species. There are several flying fox species and there are several species of this type of algae eater that look very similar to, you know, if you've only got one in front of you, like, oh yeah, that's it, that's the one. There isn't, there is several. So I'll try and, well, I'll definitely have a photo of the one that you're after. There are two or three others that I would try and avoid. And then number two, lastly, Ah, they're, they're territorial. As I was saying, they get to 15 centimeters. They can be very territorial. The problem with that is you either want to keep one or you want to keep, keep. Huh. So it's really early in the morning. So you either want to keep one or a group of three or more. The group of three or more just controls or sort of spreads out the aggression and territorial nature. So again, lost how many I'm on. Four, five, six, seven, I don't know. But these are all my favorite algae eaters that we currently have in the shop. Now, this next one, revisiting our shrimpy friends, cherry shrimps. Now, cherry shrimp come in a multitude of colors, reds, yellows, blues, blacks, you know, there is loads and loads of colors. They, in theory, should be all as simple to keep as each other. Um, they're only color morphs of the same species. So yeah, you should be able to keep them all relatively simply. That being said, some of the more um, sort of rarer and fancy species, or species, fancy colors, might be a bit weaker than others just because of how they've been bred to get that color but yeah if you want a hardy one stick to your reds and your wild coloration if you want something a little bit more fancy go for those weird colors I like amanos they are going to have those pincery hand things they are going to be able to get in all the nooks and crannies and all the bits and pieces to get that algae and the uneaten food out so they're going to give you a massive hand on the cleanliness of your aquarium obviously being shrimps they can't really grip onto the glass so they're not going to help you with the glass, but everything else in the aquarium is going to be fair game and they're going to be checking it to see if there's anything edible there. Now, unlike their Amano shrimp cousins, relatives, whatever you want to call them, they can breed in fresh water. So if you do get males and females, which is tricky to tell to the person who hasn't kept them before, the easiest way females have a sort of shield over their... Um, no, I'm going to leave that for a shrimp file. Shrimp files on cherry shrimp coming up soon. Um, so yeah, they can breed in fresh water, given enough hiding homes for the babies to get away from tank mates because the babies are tiny, tiny. So most fish, even things like endless guppies, can predate on small cherry shrimp. So given enough hiding spaces in plants, bogwood, places like that, you will get a population of cherry shrimps generally coming through. Start off with a group of 10 or so, you'll have males and females in there, and away you go. One thing actually on both types of shrimp, try and make sure they've got somewhere nice for them to go and hide when they molt. When a shrimp molts and gets rid of its outer, sh outer skin, outer shell, when it gets rid of that, the body of the shrimp ends up being really, really soft for a little bit of time until it rehardens and regrows. At that time, they'll generally hide away, try and sort of find somewhere safe for them. That's just so they don't get eaten. When they're soft, it is easier for for fish to eat them. So make sure they've got some hiding spaces in there that fish can't really get to or fish don't know about. And then they should come through the mulch stage absolutely fine. I think I'm gonna finish it on this one. It's a slight curveball, ball um, just because of who they are and what they are. But I think I'm gonna finish it here. We used to have them in this tank behind me before the uh, before MD fish tanks and the guys and girls in the shop rescaped it and redone it. Now they are live bearers. We used to have sword tails in this one, big group of sword tails. And they are actually a fantastic algae eater. Generally, uh, live bearers are sold for their colour or their interest. You know, the platys, and I'm, I'm talking about the sort of more standard live bearers. There's a lot of live bearers out there that don't eat algae. There's some proper weird ones out there that, yeah, are harder to keep than anything. So, yeah, I'm talking about your standard sort of four, really, I suppose. Your platys, your guppies, 
your mollies and your sword tails. Those four most commonly kept for their colour or their interest. You know, black mollies are some of the coolest fish because of how black their bodies are and just solid black. And then you'll find the sword tails, the platies and the guppies. They're just colourful and really hardy. Mm, sort of guppies can be a little bit weaker, but mostly hardy fish. Now, it is worth noting that this group that I'm talking about can range anywhere from sort of three centimetres, four centimetres, all the way up to some of the bigger mollies that are getting up to sort of 15 centimetres. Now, you have to be careful in that group. Mollies, some of them can or have to be kept in brackish or salt water. A lot of breeders will keep them in brackish and salt water because it helps with their, well, their health and their vitality, really. Stops them from getting a few problems. So just make sure the ones you are getting from the shop are being kept in fresh water and have been kept in fresh water for a good period of time before you buying them. Live bearers will spend most of their days feeding and uh, breeding. That's for another video. Um, yeah, definitely for another video, but that's the two things they do. If you're not there feeding them, they're gonna be scavenging and they will go around and be picking algae off of most of your things, most of your plants, most of your wood, and they will peck at it until it's gone. Like I said, the group of sword tails that used to be in here cleaned off a couple of massive great bits of bogwood that just had little tufts of hair algae on it. And they literally went through and picked it, cleaned it off. So they're a little bit different. They're not gonna be the algae eating prowess of a bristle nose, but they're certainly worth having in there if you want some color and something to do a job your live bearers are worth looking at. So if you've got to this bit, thank you for watching all the way through. It's amazing what you guys are helping me do with this channel. The more information I can get out there, the easier it's gonna be for everyone to succeed at fish keeping, which ultimately grows our hobby, which ultimately lets more money into the hobby, which means more new exciting products. Can't go wrong. So yeah, thank you for interacting. Thank you for liking, subscribing, commenting, all of that. Probably this should have been at the start of the video, but if you've made it this far, you the guys that are making it to the end and helping me make this channel what it is. So yeah, loads more coming up in the future as always, if I get time to make it. If there's anything you wanna see, drop it in the comments, let me know. I'm open up to ideas um, and there's loads of videos that I've got written down on my phone that I wanna complete. 2023 is the year that I'm gonna do more videos. So you guys should have more content. But the more you interact, the more I can make it, the easier it makes it for people to keep fish and to get into fish keeping. Ultimately, the more new products we're going to get, the more money gets invested in fish keeping. Let's do it. Let's, let's get more fish keeping going. I'll see you on the next one. Oh yeah, there's some good stuff coming.